Today I'm going to tell you what I did to fix my Honeywell T1 Pro thermostat so that the furnace in my manufactured home no longer runs too often. For over 30 years, our home's thermostat did a good job of turning the furnace on and off to heat and cool our house. Then, on New Year's Eve 2022, the furnace quit working. The repair was a nightmare. <clears throat> the technician replaced our existing thermostat with a new Honeywell T1 Pro model, and the furnace started working again. But, no celebration because a few hours later, it quit again. After a couple more service calls, they finally found the real problem, but left this new thermostat in place. Now, because of the way the, the new thermostat works, the furnace starts and stops at least twice as often as it did before the whole repair event began. I called the heating company to complain that my furnace would wear out too quickly, but they said not to worry. Well, I continued to worry, so I built a sensor system using an Arduino microcomputer and a wind sensing switch to monitor the furnace fan on and off times at a heat register close to my desktop computer. The system sends blower on and blower off signals to my desktop computer where I can store the information, convert it to on off and total cycle times, and graph the data on a... Uh, I can also graph the data to make it easier to understand. After taking some of these data to the heating company and discussing the situation with them, they sent out a tech to check it out and see if anything could be done. Once the tech got here, he showed me that the thermostat had a bunch of more or less hidden home furnace installer options. After explaining some of them to me, he told me that our manufacturer's home furnace isn't exactly like any of the options in this list for setting up the furnace type options, etc., and suggested choosing a different one and trying that out. I did as he suggested and immediately got the result I was looking for. Now the furnace only cycles about half as often for days with similar temperature profiles. It was all a very complicated thing, but he talked to me about these installer functions on page 6 of the manual, and, uh, and I worked on some of them. Uh, the setting that he gave me wasn't quite right because uh, although it produced longer cycle times, it also made the furnace blower shut off just for a second about two minutes before the end of each cycle, and that bothered me. So I eventually called up the Honeywell company and talked the whole thing over with them, and they made a couple of suggestions. And long and, long and short of it is that I now have a pair of settings of these installer operations that do exactly what I want them to do. So, uh, the rest of this video will be talking about those settings, really only two now that I know, but I sure didn't know before, about how these settings uh, uh, need to be adjusted for my manufactured home. When this technician was here, he talked to me about how modern furnaces are made and how many, many different types of furnaces there are out there and that many manufactured homes and trailer homes, if you will, use a much simpler furnace than many of the new ones, and he called them pot-style furnaces rather than heat-exchanger-style furnaces. And therefore, and, and because of this difference, uh, required a little bit of, uh, I don't know, customizing the settings to make things work right. So bear with me, and uh, if you have any interest, uh, listen to the rest of this, listen and watch the rest of this video. And at the end, uh, I'll leave a contact uh, method of some sort in the description, and uh, feel free to email me or whatever, uh, or make a comment if you want uh, some assistance or are curious about some other aspect of what went on here. So, ahead of time, thank you for watching.
Here's how drastically the cycle times increased by making the change that you see where the tall lines are. It's just what I wanted to have happen. Okay, I'm going to check the ISU settings for installing this thermostat. And particularly, I'm trying to pick a setting that works for this manufactured home furnace that uh, has as a few cycles per hour as I can get without making the house get hot and cold between the time the thermostat comes on and off. So far with any setting I've tried, the thermostat itself, which we keep at 74 in the winter, uh, never even varies a whole degree, at least on the face of it. The issue is there's this batch here. There's ISU 200, which is the heating system type, 205, which is the heating equipment type. Okay, so we're going to attempt to use the manual here, which I find very complex, to check uh, these ISUs. I'm going to try to follow this set of instructions here. Press and hold the menu button, which is the center button. And if you'll notice here, it doesn't say, well, does it? I don't know. I can't read it in the dark. Oh, yes. If I have a light on it, it says menu. Okay. Hold it for three seconds to enter menu. One, two, three, four. Oh, took four seconds. And it says done now, where it did say menu, right? Can we read that? I hope. Okay. Press edit to change values within a setup option, which I don't want to do. So I'm just going to press next. It says press next to advance to the next setup option. 200. Okay. And 200 is set at conventional forced air heat, according to according to this guy. Okay, so let me see. It says press next to advance to the next setup option. Two o five. Two o five must be set to number two. All right, and number two, this is a kind of a key because number two here, I hope you can read that. I'll have to read it to you if I can't. After, uh, according to my call to the to the Honeywell people, number two is called high efficiency gas forced air, and they told me that that would give me three on-off cycles per hour, and that's not a fixed number, but at least it's a lot fewer cycles per hour than it used to be when they first set it up for me which they had told me to set it up for choice number five, which was hot water fan cool. Don't ask me why, but they told me that after I had tried to set it up for number one, which is called standard efficiency gas forced air. And that, these are the two things that are in with the red marks that they put on there. Okay. Now the light went out, so I'm going to just try to push that. Okay, the light came back on. That's a good move. Now we want to go to the next function. This was 205, and it's set at 2. Okay. 230 is the, is the one that's the big issue. 205, which is set to 2, and that's the big deal. That's the three cycles per hour one, which we currently have on, and that's doing just great. ISU 230, it says ISU is only displayed if ISU 2005 is set to electric forced air or fan cool. Maybe that's where I got confused. ISU is set to electric forced air or fan coil. 205, 205 is not set to electric forced air and it's not set to 
Fan cool. Ah, maybe that's what caused. That sounds like that's what caused the um, the the hiccup, the fan hiccup. Okay, so now if I understand that all right, since I don't have ISU 2005 set to the electric forced air or hot fan cool, which are four and five, then I won't have the hiccup problem. Whew. Well, okay. I guess that sort of does it. And just for grins, you'll notice, I think, if you can see this, that the temperature in this uh, hallway right now, which is about 10 feet away from the furnace, which is around the corner, um, it's 77 in here because it's a sunny day in late March. All right.